Okay, hi there. In this revision video, we're going to be taking a look at the key functions of the price mechanism. And then I thought we'd work through a small selection of multiple choice past paper questions so that you can test your understanding. Now, lots of multiple choice questions and also short answer data questions ask you to consider how changes in the conditions of demand and supply can affect the equilibrium price and quantity in a market. So this table provides a brief summary and then we have some MC questions to have a go at when we reach the end of this video. Equilibrium is reached when in a market when there's no tendency for the market price to change, to move up or down. But if there are changes in the conditions of demand and supply, other things being the same, the equilibrium price and quantity will move. If demand increases, for example, uh, equilibrium price increases and the quantity uh, increases as supply expands. If there's a fall in demand, the equilibrium price will, will fall and there'll be a contraction of quantity supplied. If there's an outward shift of supply, other things remaining the same or ceteris paribus, the equilibrium price will be lower, but the equilibrium quantity produced will be higher. But if there's a fall in supply, Again, other things remaining the same, the price will go up, but the equi equilibrium quantity bought and sold will be lower. So the price mechanism describes how decisions taken by consumers and businesses interact to determine the allocation of scarce resources between competing uses. Now, the price mechanism in other words, the interplay of supply and demand uh, plays several important functions in a market-based economy. The allocation function simply says that prices allocate scarce resources among competing uses. How are we, for example, to use make, uh, make use of land for farming, for housing, for other purposes? Uh, the price mechanism also has a rationing function. Prices, positive prices, serve to ration scarce resources, particularly when demand outstrips supply. The mechanism has an important signalling function. The price is adjusting to demonstrate where resources are required and needed and where they're not. And of course, changes in prices send signals and therefore change the incentives for both producers and consumers. So the signalling function comes about as a result of changes in market price and they send a signal about how scarce resources should be allocated. Uh, for example, an increase in the price of coffee encourages producers perhaps to switch into making more coffee, but also encourages consumers to perhaps, perhaps use an alternative substitute product. Fall in price leads to an extension of demand that makes it less profitable for businesses to supply the good or service affected. So there's a very important signalling function of prices in markets. And the rationing fun function, I think, is also worth just emphasising a little bit more. Prices ration scarce resources where demand outstrips supply. So if, if it's food, for example, if there's a shortage of food, the price is bid up. Um, if there's a shortage of shipping capacity in the global economy, the price of shipping goes up. Uh, and essentially, if the price goes up, be it tickets for a major event or the cost of renting a house, or a product on an eBay auction, as, price goes, as prices bid up, uh, only those with a willingness and ability to pay are left with the effective demand in a market system. However, keep in mind, please, that in most in a vast majority of markets, the working of the price mechanism is impacted and influenced by one or more government interventions. In a sense, there's no such thing as a free market. Uh, once you've revised the price mechanism, please do make sure that you've covered the main government interventions, such as indirect taxes, subsidies, maximum and minimum prices. And of course, we have separate videos, several of them, on each of those interventions on the Tutor2 website. Look for the government intervention revision playlist. OK, here's a chance. I've put together five past questions. So here's a great chance to check your understanding of the price mechanism uh, and just press the pause button when you want to if you want to take a few moments to to think about your answer here we go here's question one a taxi firm raises fares at the busiest times by as much as five times the normal fare by the way we call that surge pricing taxi drivers and consumers are notified of this change immediately by mobile cell phone what will result from this policy 
Take a moment, please, to have a go at question number one. So what do we think here? The surge pricing. Uber is a good example of a company that uses surge pricing when demand is increasing. The, the price of an Uber uh, journey goes up. The correct answer is that supply will become more price elastic. What's going to happen, of course, is this, this signaling mechanism and incentive mechanism. As the surge pricing kicks in, uh, more taxi drivers will probably offer themselves to the market because they, they make they stand to make a better return per hour in their vehicle. So there'll be a more elastic price response on the supply side as surge pricing kicks in. Here's question number two. What happens if a country makes the transition from a planned economy to a market economy? Have a go, please, at question number two. So this question is about a transition country moving, for example, from a command economy plan system to a market economy. What's the most likely answer here? And the answer is D again, state ownership replaced by private ownership, maybe some process of privatisation. And no, if A is wrong, of course, it's the other way around. The price mechanism would tend to replace government decision making. Indeed, the profit motive would be replacing social objectives. So B is wrong. Non-price rationing, more commonplace. No, as you move towards the market, the role of market prices in shaping the allocation of resources will become more commonplace. So the answer is D. Here's question three. The diagram shows the demand and supply of rice. Supply increases from S1 to S2, an increase there in supply, perhaps due to a favourable harvest. And here's the question. What is the change in sales revenue received by the rice farmer? Four answers there. Please have a go at question number three. OK, how are we doing on three? Supply shifting out from S1 to S2. The market price has gone down from 32 cents per kilogram of rice down to 30. And there's been an extension along the demand curve. Quantity bought has increased from 18 to 20. The correct answer for, three, for question three is 24 cents. The total revenue originally, 32 times 18. Now we're selling more, but at a slightly lower price, 30 times 20. That's a net change of 24 cents. Here's question four. A US study published in 2014 warned teenagers, it was a dangerous task, to reduce the amount of fizzy drink they consume. One can of fizzy drink contains an adult's entire daily sugar allowance, apparently. If the advice were accepted, how might the effect be illustrated on demand supply diagrams for fizzy drinks and sugar. So here's an example of an information intervention impacting on the price mechanism. Take a moment, please. Have a go at question number four. Well, I think, I hope I got this right answer. I got the answer wrong in the last video. I hope the answer is uh, that it's B, that you'd expect with better information the demand curve for fizzy drinks to move to the left, inward shift of demand, which in theory then causes a contraction or in output or movement down the supply curve. So the answer there is, is uh, B. One more question to have a go at on the price mechanism. Here it is. Vanilla is an important ingredient in the production of ice cream. Uh, between 2011 and 2018, the, the world price of vanilla increased substantially by, well, uh, increased by 500%. The diagram shows the market demand for and supply of ice cream. Originally, the, equi the equilibrium is X. Now, which point illustrates the impact of this price rise in vanilla on the market for ice cream? Is it A, B, C or D if we initially start out at X? Have a go, please, at question five. Lots of questions like this in exams, of course, testing your understanding of supply and demand curves. In this situation, the increase in the price of vanilla is an increase in the cost of supply. Therefore, the supply curve will shift to the left from S1 to S2. We can eliminate, therefore, answer A. Will that cause a shift in the demand for, for ice cream? No, it'll cause a higher price for ice cream, but it's not a factor affecting the actual demand curve for ice cream itself. So therefore, demand would contract from X to point C. An increased price of vanilla leads to an inward shift of supply curve from S1 to S2 and a movement 
up the demand curve. How did you get on? Hopefully you did well on those five questions. Always practice past multiple choice questions ahead of assignments. They're a great way of testing objectively your understanding of key terms. There we go. I hope you have you found this little journey through some of the economics of the price mechanism useful. I'll add it to our playlists and hope to see you again sometime soon.